guys, it's Sarah from Losing It For Me 42. And I've kind of decided that today is a bit of an up day for me emotionally, and so therefore I'm gonna try and talk about some of the shit that I've been going through. Excuse me while I readjust everything because I look stupid. So, where to start? I where to start? Um, growing up, my parents rarely ever drank. Um, my father would have a beer when he got home from work, and that's when he was working. My mother drank very, very sporadically. She had a whole bunch of health concerns, so like drinking on top of that was just not a wise you know, wise thing to do in general. And my parents like would drink occasionally on holidays, but I don't think I've ever seen my parents drunk ever. And so I was really not raised around alcohol or talked about alcohol in my family growing up, I would later discover that this is most of the reason why they didn't drink was that they both had alcoholism on, you know, their, in their families and that, you know, they had seen and been around people who were alcoholics in their families and that was not something that they, something they decided early on that they didn't want to deal with in them. So, fast forward to when I was probably in my late teens, I hung, and though most people don't believe this, I hung with a very rough crowd. Um, I lived in a small town and there it was slightly urbanish, but not too urbanish. It was—it's a weird mix. Um, and there really wasn't a ton to do except sneak off and get drunk, and so that's what I did as a teenager. When I got into my twenties, where most people are getting shit-faced drunk, I was like, "Yeah, I've kind of done that." Um, but I didn't really drink much in my early twenties. In my late 20s, I started working for a liquor company, and I got a crap ton of free samples. Now, I didn't drink wine before this, I didn't drink hard alcohol before this, and this was all new to me, and I got a crap ton of it for free on almost all occasions, pretty never-ending free samples. Um, I remember I had a wine party, because <laughs> I was so sophisticated. I had a wine party with, like, because I had six cases of wine in my house. And I was like, for the love of God, come to my house and drink the fucking wine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I had a lot of booze and I had a lot of, uh, wine and just everything on hand at all times. And we used to throw parties. Um, I lived with roommates at the time, and we used to throw, like, you know, weekly or semi- and monthly parties. And, you know, we're young 20-something-year-olds, and we had a large social circle, and it was like, yeah, come to the house, because we all rented a house together. It was like, come to the house, and we'll have a big party. And we had lots and lots of parties, and thankfully, they drank a lot of our booze, thank God. Um... I continued in that job and there were times in which I felt a lot of pressure to drink and I don't I don't really know how to really talk about it because it's not something that I think many could understand unless they've been in the industry. Um, liquor in particular, like if we went out to lunch, if I was taken out to lunch by a manager or a, um, uh, 
um, supervisor or whatever, in order to expense the lunch, they had to buy alcohol. So everyone at the table had to have a drink with lunch. And that was super common. And a lot of them had more than one drink. Um, I remember my first day at the liquor company, I went out to lunch with the general manager as a farewell to the person I was taking the position from and hello to me. And they went through like four bottles of wine. I had two glasses and I was toasted. And I was just like, fuck, this is my first day and I don't want to get drunk. Like, this is bad. But, you know, I worked with a bunch of people who alcohol was very much a part of their lives and it was a regular thing and when you work in any industry and I think this probably goes for a lot of them there is pressure and expectation for you to partake of the culture so if you work in fashion I'm sure they expect you to dress fashionably if you work in food I'm sure they expect you to taste and sample the foods on occasion if like there there's probably like other industries where this is kind of similar and if you work in beer or you work in alcohol they're like hey have a cocktail with lunch or hey try this new wine or you know I mean we'd have sales meetings and try like six wines now technically you're supposed to spit no one spits spit buckets. No one spits. Um, everyone gets hammered. But like, yeah. So this was part of things. I would also see some people who are in this industry, it's very common for people to have some kind of drinking problem. And I don't want to say that they're alcoholics because I think that I think alcoholism is a very difficult and very complex thing, and I don't want to shove everyone who has some kind of drinking problem into, an, into alcoholism. I think those are very different things. I think it's, it's a very complex subject. So I worked with people with lots of different drinking problems. And unfortunately, you know, it's, it happens. Anybody, uh, I can imagine that if you would be eating problem and you work for a food company, like it just enables that eating problem, like, or you discover that you have an eating problem, you know, working for a food company. Like it's, you know, there's t plenty of things to be, that you're susceptible to overdoing, alcohol is one of them. And if, you know, you might not start off with a drinking problem, but if you're going out every night doing an event and drinking, it can happen. Um, and it might not happen intentionally. So I continued with that company for many years and there were times in which I honestly think I I used alcohol to deal with emotional issues to kind of in a way self-medicate and I would drink heavily and it was not a good time in my life looking back I was very unhappy um, I had lots of different kinds of problems um, and I definitely overindulged and used alcohol as a way of self-medicating and not dealing with bad things going on in my life. <sighs> then, like, since then, 
I got much better. <laughs> um, like there were there were times I drank a lot, and I will say, like, I never stopped drinking, um, and I never felt like it was so bad that I needed to be like, no, I can never drink again. Um, and so like, you know, I would, I started, I got away from hard alcohol, I got away from wine, and I, I started drinking beer. And honestly, for me, it was like, I knew I could have three beers and that was it. And then I was good. And I knew exactly how long I would be drunk for and I could, you know, I could manage things. Um, kind of like portion control. And I liked beer for that. I liked the fact that it was very portion control. Where if I make a cocktail on my own, my hand gets heavier as I make more of them. And I even found, like, with wine, I would want more. Wine is a whole separate subject for me. Um, but, yeah. So, I really liked beer in that sense. But I noticed, like, I started pushing that envelope. It was like, oh, I can have two beers when I get home. And that's how much I can have. And then it would become, I can I have three beers when I get home. And that's how much I can have. And then it was like, oh, I can have... Mm -hmm. And this continued. Um, then I went to work in beer. And... Excuse me. I went to work in beer. And a whole new world of alcohol was opened up to me. I had never had craft beer. Um, like... At that time, I was drinking Yingling or Sam Adams. Like I've never, I didn't have. Well, technically, they're craft beer. Uh, we don't carry them. Uh, but like, I hadn't had like really craft craft beer, and so like there was lots to taste and lots to learn and all of that kind of stuff and. You know, I was drinking beer on a regular basis, and it was, I probably had like a beer or two when I would come home, and I would, it was the weekends where I would, I would get lit on the weekends, um, because I could buy beer through work for dirt cheap, and they gave us beer, and yeah, so that kind of, you know happened and I was drinking pretty heavily and I put on a shit ton of weight can I say because beer is very fattening shit ton of weight um and then I started going for my BSG and I took beer out of the equation altogether um I had it every once in a while at a sales meeting to test, you know, try new things. I would sip, sip, sip it, like just a tiny bit. Um, and I was very conscious about it and I didn't really drink very often with it. Um, and even post-op, I was very good with it. Like, I think I had my first drink, I want to say I was three months post-op. I really don't. I tried to go back and see if I posted on Instagram, and I didn't. Um, and I think my first one was beer, and it was... It was rough. Because that's when carbonation was still really, really hard to do. Um, and, yeah. So, I started drinking again. Fast forward to the last few months. Um... I wasn't drinking very often. I would have a occasional, like not even every weekend, just an occasional weekend, I would have like a couple of drinks on a Friday or something. Um, 
but things have not been going well. And I noticed a lot of different and non-positive behaviors slipping back into my life and one of them was drinking. And I think it's very difficult to really understand how much worse drinking problems are when you've had bariatric surgery. Because I don't tend to be much of a binge eater, but I tend to be a binge drinker. And it's not just alcohol. It's all liquids. I just like liquid and I like to drink things and I would drink a shit ton. And, you know, for me it's like, oh, it tastes good. Like, yay! And I would have a shit ton. Um, and, you know, there are times, kind of like there are just times where people binge eat. There are times in which I would slam down a whole crap load of cocktails and the problem is, is when you, at least for me, after having surgery, I get fucked up really fast. Um, and the problem is, is because I, of the way that I drink, my body, My body doesn't, my head doesn't catch up to my body. Um, my head is just like, yeah, I've had one, two, three, or whatever. And my body's like, dude, we've had like 12. <laughs> Not that I had 12, but like, my, my body, just because the alcohol hits me like fucking brick, that by the time it hits me, I, it's already way too late. <laughs> um. And this really upsets me. Um, I I had to take some personal time and really think about why I drink and what it meant. Um, part of it was, you know, is this more than just a drinking problem? Is this alcoholism? Like, and I couldn't answer that until I could really get at all of the things behind it. And I realized it's not. Um, I don't drink every day. I don't, I haven't had a drink since my last episode. Um, but I was so horribly mortified because I blacked out. I don't, I couldn't even tell you what I, like what happened. There's only some very half formed memories, um, bits and pieces. And that really upset me. Um, there's been only a very, very, very small times in my life. Like, on one hand, how many times that's ever happened to me when I'm drinking? And one time it was because I was drinking beer that was super hot, heavily alcoholic, and I didn't know it. And I'd also just lost my mother, and it, I was all sorts of fucked up in the head at the time. So I was like, yes, I want to get as drunk as possible, not realizing what I was drinking was like 12% alcohol, which most beers are for. <laughs> So, yeah, you can imagine that one. Um, and, like, I think I had, like, four of them, which is, like, a ridiculous amount of alcohol. Um, I don't believe the person should have served me four. But I was at an event, and so, therefore, like, they don't think about it. Um, yeah, 
so I really had to think about that. I really had to sit with that. I really had to figure out what it meant to me and what I could, like, all of that kind of stuff. Hold on a second. So, yes, I had to sit with it. I had to really digest it. I had to really... I was horribly ashamed. I was ashamed that other people had seen this behavior, that other people had been exposed to this behavior, that I had done this behavior. Um, and it was very hard because everyone was like, you shouldn't be ashamed and you shouldn't... Hold on, guys. Uh, call. Um, you shouldn't be ashamed and you shouldn't... And I was like, no, no, no. Yes. Yes, I should. Um... Because if I'm not, then I don't know what would stop that behavior from ever happening again. And I think it's a very slippery slope. Um, you know, it's not... I don't... I definitely... I tend... The way that I drink is not healthy... Um, it's not all the time. It's not, you know, necessarily how I drink on a regular basis, but the, you know, especially now, especially after surgery, alcohol hits your system really, really fast. And at the same time, it has kind of a longer effect. Like you don't, you don't realize how much how drunk you are um it's really different and I think that like it it's very easy to binge drink and when you do that it can get really out of hand really really quickly because you're just tossing that shit back and not realizing like it hits you faster and it kind of I don't know for me it kind of lasts longer when I'm drinking a lot. Like, if I have one drink, like, it'll hit me really fast and then it's gone. And, you know, that that's kind of how it feels. But if I have multiple drinks, I feel like the... After, um, how long it hangs out is actually longer. Um, I think also because, you know, you fight a battle with dehydration on a regular basis and here you are like kicking back a whole bunch of alcoholic drinks um but yeah it can it can really get out of hand really quickly and you know I think that there are a lot of labels and a lot of like um, people who will look at you and go like, oh, you have a drinking problem, so therefore you're an alcoholic. And it's like, I don't wake up and need a drink. I don't drink on a everyday basis. But kind of like you have an eating disorder and you binge eat, you can have a drinking disorder and binge drink. You know, it's not necessarily all labeled and rolled up into a nice little tidy ball so when you're an alcoholic. And I'm like... I really had to sit with it because I really wasn't sure why and how and you know all of that behind what my drinking was and really what it was is that I was super unhappy and have been for a while um, things have been very not good in a whole bunch of different parts of my life and I can't eat I can't you know my boyfriend is constantly running out and getting crap and having crap fests at the house and just binge eating constantly, and I can't do that. Um, and I don't want to really do that either. Um, and I like alcohol, so like, you know, it's 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 an easy thing for for a bariatric person to treat themselves with alcohol. And it's like, you have to be very super careful because, you know, a lot of people talk about 
you know, transfer addiction and all of that kind of stuff. And I see that that is very, very possible. I don't think I have a transfer addiction to alcohol at all. I see behavior I had before that I'm doing now. And the difference is it hits me 10 times harder now and it makes it 10 times worse. So bad behavior I did before, 10 times worse now. Um, and that's really what I came down to it was I spent a lot of time thinking about it, spent a lot of time really kind of trying to evaluate the stuff behind it. And in the end I came to people have a bad day and lots of people go home and have, you know, a couple cocktails to, you know, forget about their bad day. My problem is, is that I'm having bad months and it's, it's, it's that, that behavior is growing. And I was like, no, I really need to deal with this. I really need to cut it out of my life for a while and, you know, give myself some distance from it because it's not, it's not something I'm proud of. It's not something I, you know, I feel like if I had, you know, if I had eaten something bad, I don't think I would have felt ashamed. I would have been like, oh yeah, you know, this is, this is a process. But for me, it was more the behavior I had during, um, and not remembering stuff that really, really bothered me, like really bothered me. And so I didn't want to forgive myself. I didn't really want to, um, be kind to myself because I felt like, you know, if I did, then I'm excusing that behavior and that's really something I don't want to do because it's not behavior I want. It's so much more self-destructive in my book than anything I could have eaten. And it's so much, it's such a slipper, slippery, slippier slope down into something really bad that I just want to nip in the bud now. Um... And I was very, very upset by it. Um, and I thought, like, you know, there, I had a, a, you know, the next day, like, kind of hangover type deal where I was like, uh, what the fuck is wrong with me? And, you know, I had paranoia, paranoia thoughts about the fact that I am now an alcoholic and this is all, you know, all of this stuff. And I was like... I really had to sit with it and I really had to go like, no, this is just a behavior that you had before that you thought you took care of and you didn't and it's popped its head up now because you're going through a lot of shit and you just have to deal with it. Like, I have alcohol in my house. I have a shit ton of alcohol in my house. I have, like, shelves full of beer. I have hard alcohol. I don't drink it. I, it's, it's been in my house forever. I don't drink it. Um, though I did have my boyfriend hide my vodka, because I like my vodka. Um, and, like, that's the thing, is, like, I... I go, like, I know that there's a diff, like, there, it's so, it's, you know, that's how I kind of, like, came to terms with it, is that I have a ton of alcohol in my house, I have alcohol at my fingertips at all times, and I don't drink it, and, you know, yes, I may, when I drink, drink on occasion, like, in a bad way, um, and it, is much more troubling now because it, of the way that my body is. Um, so coming to terms with that was really kind of hard. It's also in some, some, some meh, really minor side points. I have the same issue with popcorn and I have the same issue with soda is that, 
you know, there are things that sometimes when they're in my life, I have zero control over. If there is popcorn in my house, I will probably eat half the bag, if not the whole bag. Because the night I got drunk, I, dr I apparently ate a whole bag of popcorn. Um, I don't have self-control on those, on certain things. And I'm like, I need to excise this from my life and know that I don't have self-control and that if I get it in the future ever again, I will have to do it in a like portion controlled situation where you get this one tiny little bag of popcorn and go like, this is what you have. Um, but that could start a trigger for wanting popcorn again. So who the hell knows? Um, and it's stuff that you have to deal with now post-op is that there are things that the way that you interact with them is going to be so much different and I never had an issue. I liked popcorn before and never had an issue with popcorn um, but because it, it's a slider food and it's a munchy food and that for me is the big one is that I can munch on it is that it's mindless eating and there's not there's not a ton of stuff I can do that with. Um, and popcorn's like the best like chip alternative. Um, but I kind of feel better getting this off my chest. I wasn't sure if I was going to make it public. I think I will. Um, I kind of expect non-negative comments. <laughs> um, but yeah, drinking's a problem. And thankfully, upon deep introspection, it's not as big of a problem as it could be, thankfully. Um, but it's definitely something I have to be mindful of. It's definitely something I have to be super careful of. And that in the past I could, I could drink with the best of them. And now it's something that can easily get away from me very quickly. And, you know, having a whole bunch of cocktails all at once isn't the smartest route at all. It's not the smartest route. So... <laughs> I have to make sure that I am very, very mindful when I'm drinking, um, which should be a while from now because I don't plan to be drinking anytime soon, um, but very, very mindful of how I drink and why I drink um, and really work on that, that I am super unhappy and alcohol does not make that better. Um, and then I can't let that be an option in my head. So, okay. 